So, I'm cancelled. Most of libertarian Twitter has decided that I'm a stalker-obsessed, drugged-out, mentally unstable, misogynistic, rapey, abusive, threatening, doxing, sadistic, psychopath, and more. And the kingpin of an evil plot to harm an innocent flower of a woman. Who is that woman? She's the red-headed libertarian. Or more accurately, Jocelyn Glaybach. The person who posted a bad take and got blowback from it. Who used me as a scapegoat for all the negativity that came her way. And before we get into any of this, even uttering her name is a cardinal sin among her cultish followers. She claims falsely that it's doxing to refer to someone by a name they've not only used professionally and publicly in the past at a site she has no problem being public about, where just googling the redheaded libertarian lets you see places she's proud to have written for before, and they both include the name in question. Those sites are the Federalist.com and Human Events. So why was I googling her name? Because I wanted to get an informed opinion about her before confronting her over the bad takes she had. I did this while researching the site she's happy to include in her bio. Wanted to see the articles she wrote for them. For someone with as many followers as she has, however, her professional career seems to amount to two articles. Maybe they're not into it for substance, though, and given the response to my posts, I'd say that's likely. Maybe they value looks over substance. Hmm. Wonder why. See, Human Events was a Salem Media Group website. According to them, Salem Media Group is America's leading radio broadcaster, internet content provider, and magazine and book publisher, targeting audiences interested in Christian and family-themed content and other conservative values. For five years, Human Events operated under Salem Media Group before being acquired by Raheem Kassam and Will Chamberlain. So why is that relevant? Well, Kassam was looking for feisty MAGA types, as reported by multiple outlets, including the Washington Post. It's also worth noting that this outlet has featured Robert Novak, Ann Coulter, Terrence P. Jeffrey, Pat Buchanan, John Gazee, Sean Hannity, Newt Gingrich, Paul Craig Roberts, Cliff Kincaid, and Pat Sajak. Additionally, this site, infamous for supporting apartheid and being Reagan's primary source of information used in his presidency, y you know how Trump allegedly gets all this info from Fox News? Human events was Reagan's Fox News. But with these roots, who wouldn't want to write for it? Oh, uh, libertarians. So here's why this connects. Recently, the US Embassy in Iran was attacked. The attackers alleged it was retaliatory, and the alleged attacker's leader was then summarily executed with no trial or jurisdiction in the middle of a civilian airport, along with five other people. Not the point of this video, though. I plan to make a vid on it. The point is that she started commenting on it, and eventually replied to Alex Utopium, telling her that stolen property is not legitimate, by saying that conquer property is. Someone screenshotted this reply and circulated it pretty widely. It wasn't me. In fact, the screenshot was taken before I even knew of the situation. Oh, and it was in night mode. I don't use that. <gasps> Heathen. I found out about the situation at maybe 9.20 a.m. Pacific time because the group chats I'm in were all talking about it. Since the screenshot was taken two hours after the original tweet was sent, which was at 6.34, it places it at about an hour before I even heard what was going on. So when I saw people linking the tweets, I decided to do some research. I already knew about human events being Reagan's Fox News because I looked into it once before. So I already knew that. But I found some interesting info I just thought people would like to know, and given that she'd been posting about this for about a day and taunting people with lines like, Today I learned nothing makes an anarchist more mad at me than when they find out NPCs have property rights. I thought people should know about where she was proud enough to write to include in her bio. At 1010, I posted the thread, almost a full six hours after the altercation between Alex and Jocelyn, and over a day after she started intentionally stirring the pot. That fact wouldn't stop what was to come. Flash forward one day, and I wake up to a raging torrent of hate in my mentions. Turns out, she'd blocked me, so I couldn't respond, and started talking shit behind that block, quote-tweeting me, and saying the following. 
I am both amazed and flattered that you devoted your entire day yesterday to lying about me, and I have absolutely no idea who you are. Your timeline is a shrine to me, and I don't think about you at all. There. That was my last tweet regarding this. I finally found the source of the lies. It's been a successful morning. I feel relieved. She spent the next hours scapegoating me for literally everything that was happening for a day. While she did that, she claimed my Charles Manson eyes are why she carries, calling me a disgusting human being, an opportunist, saying I beg for money, that I likely live off the state, pinning death threats she allegedly received on me, accusing all anarchists of living in a fantasy world, calling me a liar while not proving that accusation, claiming I was trying to shut her up, and that I have a large following, and finally, calling everyone who unfollowed her garbage. Oh, and she did all this while padding her timeline with a thread of people posting their pets so people wouldn't think too hard about the obvious lies she was telling. I posted proof all of this was bullshit. And it didn't matter. She was hell-bent on destroying me, no matter how rational she had to avoid being to do it. Worse, I made a humorous comment, hitting back at her for accusing me of relying on government assistance, where I included links to my real income sources. And because of this, she's lied many times that I'm trying to profit off her being threatened. It didn't need to be said, but I don't endorse the threats she's gotten. For the record, that said, she's only managed to post one of these threats, and she blocked out the timestamp for some reason. I'd suspect it's because the threat was posted at a time inconvenient to her narrative. I never spoke to this person, and never orchestrated any attacks. I don't do that kind of shit! The most I do is tell people to civilly prove someone wrong. But she can't even connect this message to me, nor can she post all of the alleged rape threats, everyone simply believing that alongside the rest of the crock of shit she's concocted against me. And because I'm not taking responsibility for something I had nothing to do with, a gaggle of her stupid orbiters are trying to accuse me of being responsible. Catch 22! Either I admit responsibility for the attacks and become the self-appointed kingpin of an actual crime, where I don't because it had nothing to fucking do with me, and I'm the bad guy goddamned anyway. Well, fuck that. So I posted my side of the story, including nothing but fact as usual, and left it for another day. Then yesterday, she brought it all back up. Why? Because she's not happy that not everyone is a cultist in her clique. Dee Dee Watson 4 had the audacity to disagree, an account who goes by Liberty underscore Hangout posted that people should stop fighting with Jocelyn. Nice implication that she's not fighting with people and shouldn't stop that herself, by the way. And Dee Dee said she didn't like the way Jocelyn came at me. So Jocelyn claimed in a quote tweet that she carries because of people who obsess and stalk and told Dee to get better friends. And let me just say, before I get into the meat here, Jocelyn quote tweets a lot. She retweets her own tweets. A lot. She wants as many of her nearly 60,000 people to see people she tears down as possible. For a woman complaining about getting constant targeted harassment, she's had no problem being one of the reason Dee Dee's day was full of as much hatred as possible. Same with myself and everyone else with whom she disagrees, and of whom she believes she can make an example. Take how she treated Cassie Chandler. When she posted the screenshot, which again, I'm not responsible for, two days ago, before the most recent resurgence of hatred toward myself and my associates, it got some traction. Someone responded by calling her libertarianism into question, to which Chandler responded by joking that she has principles as fake as her hair. A woman named Paige Sully came in to tell her not to insult physical appearance, which is funny considering the person she's defending immediately insulted my appearance in the beginning of trying to cancel me. Because she's public about where she writes, someone found the managing editor of Human Events as well. They posted a link by Ashley Ray Goldenberg, where she details how he'll not only try to get people's accounts removed from Twitter for daring to discuss an alleged swatting incident with which he was involved, among many other things. This poster rightly referred to Ian as her boss, because that's how managing editorship works. She responded with, I don't have a boss, though, completely failing to prove that or acknowledge the problems he's had. 
A guy who's been actively racist many times, tried false accusations of racism to get others canceled, used real suppression techniques to really shut people up, and allegedly been responsible for swatting gets a pass. But the evil anarchist hair man? I have Charles Manson eyes. Because it's only okay to insult men's appearances. I guess. Cassie and I are on good terms, and she seems interested in this vid. I looked forward to releasing it. But the red-headed libertarian likes Paige's tweet, where Chandler was called not a very good human. Since Paige has back the blue in her bio, Cassie fired back with LOL, a bootlicker, and I'm the bad human. Hashtag blue lives murder. Ask me? That's the perfect response from a libertarian perspective. So in another thread where she said, there's nothing constructive about name-calling. I simply asked Paige if Jocelyn calling me for her Jeremiah, if you ever spelled her way because she can't spell, was okay. The whole thing devolved into me being accused of sliding into this convo, asking for money. I did nothing of the sort. All I did was include a link to a tweet where I posted a screenshot of the initial slander, calling me for her Jeremiah. Again, she can't spell Führer and falsely accusing me of living off the government. I used the link tweet to go over the fact that I don't get government assistance and to highlight how nasty Jocelyn was being about a completely unrelated tweet where I thanked a donor and said if a tiny fraction of my followers did the same, I could afford a lot of upgrades and make much more and better content. So like, normal content creator things. Things she used to call me a beggar, an opportunist, and a government welfare whore. And what did Paige do? She was callous indifferent, and belittling. Now, I'm all three of those things, but I'm not complaining that people are called names. Truly pathetic from that angle. But the meat of this interaction with Dee Dee is that it reignited everything. I had already spoken my piece, and she could have let it fucking die. But she waited almost a day to hit someone over it. Not me, someone else. And she did this. A lot. Anyone who questions her lying ass got a torrent of hate with a few exceptions, and she kept threatening to block people who she claimed she had previously respected, etc. Some of those were people trying to make peace, like Tegovna, who I've known for close to a decade. He was vouching for me hard and admirably, but she's been totally and completely unreceptive to reason. And her followers are equally unreceptive. Hundreds of them are blaming me for all of the exactly one threats she received. And none of them care that she was getting this hate many hours before I even discussed it. And that I don't know the person who threatened her, nor have I ever spoken to him, nor have I ever called for or authorized threats. Doesn't matter to them. So here we are. And that's when I decided enough was enough. And I told Jocelyn that if she wanted war, Fine. I'd be making a vid where everything was organized and out in the open. But oh no, I used her name that you can find easily on Google by looking up her username, that you can find by looking up the one article she co-wrote with Ian Miles Chong on human events where her name is listed, that you can find on Muckrack, The Federalist, and more. She's been public by this. But because I said it, now I'm doxing her. Worse yet, I'm threatening her children somehow. I've already been threatened for this and publicly slammed. My name is Mud because of this bitch and her lies. Newsflash, stating publicly available info you yourself put out there is not doxing. Calling someone by the name they use on a site in their bio is not doxing. I doxed nobody. Didn't stop her from launching a campaign to try to shut down my Twitter. Didn't stop her from lying. Didn't stop the smear campaign from reaching a fever pitch with hundreds of notifications a minute. So then, a few people tried to organize a ceasefire. It was all organized in DMs I couldn't access, so I sent terms through the arbiters. She would need to admit publicly that she lied about doxing, encouraging threats, being paid by government, and being the source of all this. And she'd need to delete her tweets against me. Because right now there are a long series of lies and hundreds of people are trying to get me arrested, shut down, and canceled. And her followers aren't going to stop simply at her say-so. Neither will anyone else who comes upon these tweets. This is a smear campaign. And I won't go quietly while it's allowed to continue. Her lies are making liars out of hundreds. 100% reasonable terms. 
She then unblocked me to basically demand a ceasefire where we both simply stop talking about it. Not okay. She doesn't have to take down her lies. She doesn't have to admit she lied when all I did was tell inconvenient truths. She can continue to vocally libel me and no repercussions are necessary, nor will any be undertaken. No. So I calmly explained things to her that I never doxed, lied, threatened, harassed, stalked, or anything of the like. And that her lies were damaging my rep and needed to be accounted for. This whole time, she blamed me for a screenshot I didn't take, circulating based on accounts other than mine and calling me the source of harassment, despite being the source of 100% of mine. I wasn't going to roll over and take it. So I waited between responses, responses she kept retweeting to her timeline because she knew if she retweeted her own tweets it would increase visibility. Anyway, she eventually rejected the ceasefire. Because my terms were that I wanted admittance, she lied. I was willing to remove everything but the first four tweets. It isn't wrong to tweet about the roots of an organization, and I refused to let the truth be hidden. I felt it was intentional. Harass me for days, give me a constant dogpile in my mentions, constantly attack associates simply for being associates and more, and it all stops if I remove the truth. Just a little truth removed, that's all. Fuck that. People need to see everything. But if it's not even good enough that only the initial truth before her lying smear campaign against me remains, I don't care what is. So here it is. Everything's in the open. I'm not the source of her drama. She is. If you still want to side with a toxic liar, your choice. Want to come at me like all her other orbiters did? Do it. I'm here for the long haul. 2020 will be great and nothing and nobody's gonna get in my way. I've been on Twitter for as long as she has and my account's been fucking up status bullshit forever. Nobody's gonna be able to lie me into oblivion. I'm not going anywhere. You wanna cancel me? Try harder. Fucking women, am I-